Good morning, fellow explorers. Thank you for waking up and joining us this morning on our positivity pop up. It is Sunday, April 23rd. And I have got some really fun stories for you. But first, um, I'm multitasking, obviously. Um, hi, hi, Siren Sara. Thanks for joining Good us. Morning joining as a co-host. It makes me so excited. So this week, I had a really good week. I um, had a birthday, turned 44, and got to have dinner with my family. And my boyfriend's kids picked out a Lego creator set for me that has an octopus. <laughs> yeah. So an octopus and a dude in a submarine and some buried treasure with a skeleton scuba diver, which makes me a little, which makes me feel a little unsettled, but whatever. <laughs> but you can also, you can either do that or you could do a stingray with a coral reef and a scuba diver. And there was one other, and I can never remember that one because those are the two that I'm excited about, but you can make, you have like three choices of the things that you can make. And I also bought a roof and I signed the contract like a week and a half ago and it just went up on Thursday and my roof looks amazing. So I'm officially a grown up, I think. Sara, how was your week? Uh, my reef is good, but I just got downstairs and every single animal in my house is very noisy. I will let you continue while I let them all outside. Um, I barely heard that because after all these years of doing the positivity pop-up, you'd think I remember to plug my headphones in, but I didn't, so... There you go. You mean to tell me you didn't hear all the cats cramp, crying and the dogs barking at my house? I did hear you mention something about animals, but I had my headphones on and there was no, no sound coming out of it. But we're better now. I fixed it. It only took me two and a half minutes and two and a half months. So there you go. <laughs> Which reminds me, if you're not listening to us live, if you're catching this later in the day or later in the week... I don't edit on Sundays and we record this live on Sunday mornings. We are on Podbean if you want to listen to it live. If you're catching us after the fact, it's probably not the best edited show um, because it's not edited at all. Are we ready to jump in, Sara? Indeed, let's go. I have fed the cat so they are no longer crying at me. Nice. All right. So April 23rd, that's today, is among other things. National, I just picked out some that I was excited about. National Cherry Cheesecake Day, National English Muffin Day, Brian, this one's for you. It's National Brian Day, National Picnic Day, National Lover's Day, Mark, that one's for you. Um, and then my two personal favorite, National Take a Chance Day and International Creator Day. So there are, let's see. Cherry Cheesecake, Take a Chance, and Creator Day are for sure going to be celebrated in my home. Lover's Day, that's on the list. We're going to see if we can make that happen. Sara, are you celebrated? Are you excited about celebrating any of those holidays today? Uh, cheesecake, uh, National Cheesecake Day sounds brilliant. Mm -hmm. Cherry Cheesecake even, yep. yep I can yeah. Think. National Lover's Day is never a bad thing. That should be never. Everything. Yeah, well, I think maybe it is. And I'm just curious as to why, why Hallmark hasn't gotten in on all of these. Right? It's so bizarre. They have, I feel like there's a missed opportunity. <laughs> See, I might post something on Siren Soapbox, like on the uh, TikToks for International Creator Day. Stay tuned. We'll see what happens. Um, we're going to get started. I have five stories for you, and then I'll leave you with some things you can do to celebrate Earth Day at the very end. So... Yesterday, we celebrated the 53rd Earth Day. Seems like Fifth Third Bank missed out on an opportunity to do some marketing for Earth Day, the 53rd Earth Day, but whatever. It's too late now. Way to go, Fifth Third. Um, today, I thought it would be fun to share some positive news stories that highlight some of the amazing things that are happening on our beautiful planet. 
So I have five stories for you that fit that theme. The first one is a about a tree growing nonprofit in Madagascar. The name of the nonprofit is called Green Again, and they provide a training program for for any person who wants to learn how to restore forests on the island. It was founded by a man named Matt Hill. He retired to Madagascar after a 15 year career on Wall Street. And Mr. Hill is the only non Madagasy who works for the nonprofit. I thought that was really cool. They hire the people that they hire or um, train rather live within like a 60 to 90 minute walk, they said, for the most part. Which got me thinking, I wonder how long it would take me to walk to work. It's like a 10 minute drive. Um, the training program, this is what Mr. Hill has to say about it. He says, a way of describing green again is not that we plant trees at all because we don't. Green again plant zero trees. What we do is run an eco school that's a six year training program to take illiterate farmers who want to reforest their own family land. What we do is we're a tree planting entrepreneurial launching. So I read this article on World at Large, and they report that by the end of six years and 12 different exams that these farmers have taken, it's a ton of material, the Malagasy leaders at Green Again have learned to excuse me, have learned to produce cash flow projections, manage their own banking, and do their own taxes, some of whom start without even the ability to read or even hold a pencil properly. So that's pretty fantastic. They focus on teaching participants how to plant and care for native trees, and they've been able to plant 64 different species of trees, while most other reforestation projects have only been able to manage about five different species. So that's also pretty fascinating. Um, yeah, I think the way that they're different. So I know we talked to uh, the one of the owners of Lecky Lecky on our podcast some episodes back, and they're doing a very similar thing, um, but they're providing stipends to, to people who plant trees. This is a little different because they're just educating people on how to reforce and then kind of leaving it up to them to start their own business and um, earn their own profit. So it's pretty fascinating. All right. Next story is about. Oh, sorry. Did you? Un did you? Oh, you did unmute. What up, girl? I, well, I have to be careful uh, as I'm unmuting um, because, like I said, I'm still with a cast. But that's an amazing story. Go on with the next. Yeah, it was really cool to read that. All right. So this next story is about a device that pulls dozens of liters of water out of the air. And it's being installed in Jordanian homes. So the Good News Network reported that an entrepreneur out of Jordan who created a sophisticated device is able it's able to extract water from the desert air at a rate so quick that it could be the solution to Jordan's water shortage. So Jordan is among the countries in the world with the highest rate of water insecurity. Much of Jordan's population may only have access to 200 cubic meters of water per year and only 36 hours of tap water per week and that's provisioned by like their by the authorities. The World Health Organization says that those levels can create harm to human health and, and economic development. So a company named AquaPro, they developed the device that looks sort of like, an, they say it looks like an air conditioning unit sitting on top of like a normal water cooler. And it can harvest 35 liters of water per day from the desert climate, which has a humidity rate of about 20%. It uses some it uses the process, they call it the uh, Venturi effect. It's basically a way to squeeze water out of the air by circulating it through narrow tubes. And I totally like dumbed that down. There's like, there's a whole explanation about this in the article, which there will be a link in the description. Um, but the 
Aqua Pro device, it does this at a rate like twice as fast as current moisture capture technology, which is pretty amazing. And the Jordanian government has already purchased a thousand units. And they, because of the government's buy-in, I guess they've been able to attract some um, top level researchers and things like that. So they're getting some really great funding and this seems like it might be, this might be, a, I don't know, I'm really excited to see how this affects the, uh, the situation there. How about that, Sarah? Yeah, it's pretty neat. It always amazes me how people come up with this stuff. All those science smart people. Yeah. Well, wait till you hear about the next story I have for you, Sarah. Oh. More wait smart people doing smart, smart things. Up. What did you say? Way to build this one up, huh? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Sarah. Sargasm. Yes. Have you ever heard of it? I indeed have, as a matter of fact. <laughs> All right. So this is a little side story. Sargasm, it's this weird seaweed that washes up on beaches in droves. And Sarah and I, plus a few other loved ones, had the pleasure of cleaning sargasm off of the beach where Siren TC got married back in March. And apparently the... Uh, Sargasm is not, tip, not typically a problem on this beach, but there were some weird winds that weekend out of the north that kind of mucked everything up. So this sargasm was, I got there late. Sarah got there. She was like one of the first people to arrive to help clean up this mess. What was it, like two feet high on the beach? It went, you know, there was a peak to, a, there's like a little mountain range with a peak of a, about that. Yeah, maybe not quite that high, but it was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. So I had never heard of sargasm at all before this trip and my entire weekend was like plagued with it. And then I came home and I settled in. I was ready to just relax after my nice relaxing vacation, turned on the latest Bob's Burgers episode that I missed. And it was all about sargasm washing up on their beach. And I thought that was crazy coincidental. <laughs> so sargasm. I'm sorry, what was that? I, I, I thought maybe you were done with the sargasm. I was going to be disappointed. Oh, no. I got a whole story, girl. Uh, so sargasm is made up of a string of molecules that are similar to some plastics. And researchers were able to combine sargasm with, like, acid and salt and some other chemicals and make it, like, this pliable plastic-like substance. And they were able to produce it in sheets of biodegradable plastic that could be used for many things, including food packaging. So there, so think about like when you buy a bottle of, I don't know, hot sauce and it has that film over the bottle and the cap to, it's sort of, you know, sealing it. This would be used sort of as a replacement for that. And unlike other biodegradable plastics, which can take like a year or longer to, to degrade, this stuff can be biodegradable in a compost pile in as little as three weeks. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So seaweed in general, I guess, is pretty versatile. I learned, this is on an um, article from the Good News Network. I learned that seaweed is being used to make diapers that are good for baby skin. In Turkey and Denmark, some algae is being used for fuel in cars and airplanes, and it's used to clean up harbor pollutants in the Netherlands. And of course, it's being used for all types of packaging, like, you know, we just talked about. It's also being used to make food and even cosmetics. So I'll have the link to the article um, that on the Good News Network so you can check all that out. But I was pretty fascinated by that. I was like, good job, because we need a solution for that stuff. It's kind of gross. And if you're harvesting it and using it for good things that can go back into the planet, why not, right? No, that's, I'm not, if you just look at the volume of sargasm that they have, just on mm. such a boy. Right. That's a lot of something that you can do. It's a lot of something. All right. So more about our oceans. They're 
This is awesome. There was a new coral reef discovered in the Galapagos. The Environment Ministry of Ecuador's Galapagos Islands reports that a previously unknown coral reef has been discovered. It survived the El Nino weather of 1982 and 1983, and until now, they thought that the only one coral reef had survived that weather, and um, they refer to that one as the Wellington Reef. So they only had one coral reef for, I mean, what was that? Oh my gosh, that's like 40 years ago, for 40 years. So Environment Minister Jose Davalos said on Twitter that a deep water scientific expedition has found the first totally pristine coral reef, approximately two kilometers or 1.2 miles long, and it's at 400 meters deep on the summit of a submarine mountain. Galapagos surprises us again. So it's a thriving marine life environment. It has more than 50% living coral. That's very positive. And in this day, old, when all you hear about is how the coral reefs are being damaged and killed, that's great news. Yeah, it's really exciting. So Stuart Banks, he's a senior marine researcher at the Charles Darwin Foundation who participated in the expedition. He says that this is a very important, this is very important at a global level because many deep water systems are degraded. He added that the coral is several thousand years old at least. It's so exciting. Very cool. Very positive. I like that. And my final story for you is more about coral reefs. So there are scientists in the Caribbean who are making coral reefs in record time. So coral reefs, the reefs themselves, like the architecture of it, is um, made with some calcium substance that is leached out of coral and it, you know, sort of creates a cement and binds everything together. And it takes a really long time for this to happen. But there is a company or a project in um, the Caribbeans. It's located in Antigua and Barbuda. CBS News reports about this. It's called the Ocean Shot Project, and it's spearheaded by climate scientist Dr. Deborah Brosnan. They launched in 2021 to develop a massive first-of-its-kind coral reef restoration initiative. So Brosnan says, We lose more coral reefs in a day than we can restore in a decade. She said our progress towards protecting coral reefs which ultimately protect us, is too slow. So Ocean Shot is about literally rebuilding the reefs, the architecture of the reefs, for the future. Her team creates coral reef structures in a lab, and then they plant them in the ocean. So they refer to this process as gardening. And they also plant resilient corals, which are ones that have survived a bleaching event. So they um, are helping to populate coral more quickly that way. They just deployed the first set of these modules about six months ago, and they're already seeing results. So that's really cool. Brosnan said, we've got 97 to 98% survival of the corals we've transplanted, and we now have 26 new species that have moved in by themselves. Everything from parrotfish to commercial fish to commercial lobster. She added, we saw a whole ecosystem start to recognize these reefs as home and just move right on in. So what it told us is that if we provide the living structure, the ecosystem will respond in, in return. It's like a, if you build it, they will come scenario. Yeah, it is. That's really great. That's a lot of positive stuff. But then Heck about. yeah. So coral reefs, um, not only are they super important to marine life, but they're really important for us too. I learned that they protect our coastlines by breaking up about 90% of large wave energy. And they are also a crucial source of food and income for more than about a half billion people all over the world. So we need to uh, take care of our reefs, people. And people make fun of me for not, for, for passing up on the straw. I'm just, I'm just like, yeah. Think of the reefs. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Guess what, Sarah? What, Mary? 
I have I have coral reef jokes for you today. No way. You have coral reef jokes. <laughs> yep. I'm positive you're crazy. Go for it. All right. <laughs> Why did the octopus cross the reef? Well, was it to get to the other side? Close to get to the other tide. <laughs> One time I was out scuba diving when I suddenly heard beautiful voices singing in unison. I was very surprised until I looked beneath me and realized it was coming from a coral reef. <laughs> <laughs> Aquarium decorations on clearance. Sorry, no reef funds. <laughs> All right, ready. Here's here's an actual one that you get to try to answer. Uh oh, I feel the pressure now. Why is it so hard to figure out who killed the Great Barrier Reef? Um, I I don't know why. It had a lot of anemones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, and then one more, which is super cheesy. It says, "If the eel has big teeth." And can be found in a reef. That's a moray. Oh, that's pretty funny. Like that. <laughs> All right. Well, these are some really good articles. I agree with you, Sarah. It was fun to read about all the cool things happening on our planet. Um, but I want to leave you with 11 things, 11 ideas for celebrating Earth Day. It is not too late. Earth Day should be every day, am I right? Okay. All right, so this is another Good News Network article. And they provide us with 11 tips. I'm gonna read them to you now. Email or call a friend and say happy Earth Day. Maybe schedule a walk. Buy a packet of sunflower seeds and give them to a kid to plant. Turn off your lights and appliances that you're not using. Every small effort counts, you know. Oh, this is a good one. Actually, this is one that I signed up for on the um, Earth Month Challenge. Bring some gloves in a bag and uh, pick up some trash along the road side or a shoreline. Um, sprinkle some wildflower seeds. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. So I want to go on the record to say this article says sprinkle some wildflower seeds wherever you think a place needs a smile including a bike path an athletic field a school or along a public sidewalk all I kept thinking is planting you know sprinkling wildflower seeds on somebody's like soccer field or football field or baseball field <laughs> I feel like that's, that would make someone upset <laughs> Um, plant something, start with a potted tomato plant or some lettuce seeds. So this is fun because, you know, we do have that challenge where we're going to plant a native plant, food plant somewhere. Mm -hmm. Make a choice to buy organic food. Stop using household chemicals. This one says that um, dish soap, baking soda, and white vinegar are all you need for an easy spring cleaning. So keep some canvas bags in your car and use them when you shop. Vow to end chemical treatments on your lawns and plants. I'm sure the HOA would love that, Sara. Yeah, <clears throat> you wouldn't get written up any at all here. Today, <laughs> and decide to organize an Earth Day party or festival next year. So that feels like a challenge for the Siren Soapbox to have an Earth Day party next year. Uh, that'd be good. Always, yeah. Always good to have a party. We could get all of the uh, local sirens together. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we could get all the local sirens together in Hawaii this time. <laughs> that, that sounds like a good idea. That's I, Actually, visiting Hawaii is one thing I want to do in 2024. So we should make that happen. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I got for you today, Sara. Well, that was amazing. And, really and all of our fellow explorers. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I do that all the time. No problem. I was just... Uh, very appreciative of all the positivity in this podcast this morning. Oh, well, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope it made you smile today. Thanks for listening in. Uh, first time caller, aka friend of the pod, Bill. Appreciate ya. 
And we appreciate all of you who are listening to this now, later, after the <laughs> post live recording. Um, if you are itching for some more Siren Soapbox, you can find us at our website, sirensoapbox.com. You'll find a link to our podcast where you can find us on any of the platforms. You could also just search for Siren Soapbox anywhere you listen to podcasts and you'll find us there. Um, we have our latest episode is our interview with Adina Mignona, who re- who wrote the book Crazy Foolish Robots, the first in the Robot Galaxy series, which is a really fun series. I can't wait to dig more into that. And um, I, it was right there. I should have said dive into that. It was right there in front of me and I missed it. <laughs> because uh, we will be recording in deep and we are, will all be diving into that one. So. That's right. It's another book, and it's a really good book so far. I I, I will finish it today. <laughs> yep, I have, I'll finish that and start it uh, actually the next one. Oh, really? Yeah. It was yeah. It, In Deep is really good, too. What's the next book again, Sarah? Um, the next one, the next in that series is Sunken Death. Oh, wow. That sounds enticing. All right. Now I can't wait to finish it. Well, Thank you again, fellow explorers. We will catch you next time. Until then, dive in, stay curious, and be happy. See you. Bye. See ya.